Добър вечер. Добър вечер на, на всички, които се присъединяват към а, презентацията. Виждам, че постепенно а, стаята се напълва. А, ще започна с а, това да се представя. Аз се казвам Димитър Александров и съм представител на Агенция за образование в а, чужбина SkyMines. А, ние като агенция, която представлява Радба от университи в България, имаме за задача да популяризираме дейността на университета, да разкажем малко повече за възможностите, които а, предлага Холандия като дестинация за образование, в частност Радба от а, като университет. А, да научите повече за студентския живот там, за начините за кандидатстване за отделните програми. Като това, което искам да отбележа, че нашите услуги за студентите са абсолютно безплатни, ако желаят да им съдействаме и да помогнем в целия процес по кандидатстване. Това, което искам също да кажа е, че тази презентация се записва и след това ще ви изпратиме на всички по имейл, на имейлите, с които сте се регистрирали. Моля по време на презентацията да задавате своите въпроси в чат бокса отдолу, не в Q&A, тъй като чат също се и записва и ще имаме възможност след това да прегледаме и евентуално да отговорим на въпросите, които не сме успели да а, отговорим. Днес имаме удоволствието а, тук да присъстват а, Карен Фан, а, Кристина Костова, Кристина Стоянова, а, Пами Димова, които са студенти в а, а, университета. Карен ще направи своята а, презентация. А моите колеги Елена и Марика ще помагат и съдействат а, при а, въпросите, които имате и с а, всичко, което може да бъде в подкрепа тази вечер. Well, Карен, I've made my presentation. You can start uh, your PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dimitar. Uh, my name is Karen Fun. I work as a recruitment officer for uh, Rabat University in the Netherlands. And uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, with me here today are three students uh, who have already been introduced just now, who will also share their own personal experiences with you. Um, and now I will start with um, sharing a presentation with you um, about Rabat University. Um, I will talk you through Rappard University and um, we'll go through uh, some, some things um, about studying here and about the city and student life. And if you have any questions, then please pop them in the chat. We have students who will answer them. And after the presentation, uh, we will also go through your questions and we will ask them. We will uh, try and answer your questions uh, as well as we can. So Rappert University, we are in the Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands, as you all know, is the land of the tulips, the windmills. Um, but of course, um, it is there is a lot more to, um, to Nijmegen and uh, to the Netherlands. We'll show you where we are. We are in Europe, as most of you will probably know. Um, we're on the western end of Europe, uh, very close to Germany. Um, and the Netherlands is, um, as you can see, it's a very small country. Um, but the Dutch people, because it's such a small country, they have always traveled. And um, within our travels, we have also uh, um, yeah, met a lot of people from, from other countries, uh, which has made the, um, the Dutch people very international and open-minded and welcoming to other countries. It's also produced um, with the travels and with the uh, international uh, contacts. Um, it's made us quite a, an entrepreneurial country. So we have large companies that you may have heard of, like uh, Unilever, for example, um, Heineken, the beer company, um, the chip, um, the electronic chip companies that we have. Um, so it's a good environment to study and a good environment to do uh, internships, for example. The, um, the education system um, in the Netherlands um, is very good. The, all universities in the Netherlands are in the top 1% uh, of all universities worldwide. All universities are in the, the top 200. 
Um, and because we are such a small country um, and we have always traveled to other countries, the um, the level of English in the Netherlands is very high. It's the it's the highest level of English outside of the native English speaking countries. So when you travel to the Netherlands, there is no need to learn Dutch, um, although it 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 may help, of course. Um, um, yeah, socially. The picture here you see here, for example, this is uh, this is Nijmegen, where our university is located. This is the old city center. Um, there is a lot more to the Netherlands. Uh, it's a multicultural society, as I said. It's because um, we have always traveled and uh, met other countries. So we welcome other cultures. Uh, we're open to other cultures. We like seeing people from other countries. It's a, it's a very good place to study because um, the tuition fees for Bulgarian people are the same as the tuition fees um, for Dutch people. That's because uh, we're both EU countries. So uh, it's it's quite an affordable country to study. Uh, so that gives it a good value for money. And of course, a fun fact is there are more bikes than people in the Netherlands. There's about 18 million people in the Netherlands and there's about 20 million bicycles. So every person has at least one bicycle on average. Now, if you're thinking of going to university in the Netherlands, there are two university types that you can, uh, that you can choose from. Basically, uh, there's the research universities, um, of which Rabat University is one. Sorry, I'll just go back to that one. Um, the university is research based and it teaches the students to be analytical, to do research, um, to be to be um, yeah, creative thinking people. And um, what we ask from our students and what we study is the why question. Like if you study economics, for example, you study, you know, why are things done the way they are and how can that be changed, for example? Um, the university programs for a research university is uh, three years for a bachelor's program. Every bachelor starts in September and they all last three years. If you go to university for applied sciences, for example, um, the thing you will start, it's, it's more applied. That's why it's called applied. Um, so it's more like a profession oriented program rather than a research or academic oriented program. These programs are three and sometimes four years. The reason why they're longer is um, because there's a lot of internships. There's more people spend more time um, doing internships when they do a, a study at the University of Applied Sciences than they would do at a research university. So now a little bit about uh, the city of Nijmegen. Um, Nijmegen is uh, is an old city. Um, it's officially the oldest city in the Netherlands because it's uh, based uh, on uh, Roman foundations. Um, it's a uh, it's a lively student town. There's a there's a lot of uh, of uh, students uh, in Nijmegen. We have uh, the research university, Rabat University. We also have a university of applied sciences. So about fifteen percent of the population in Nijmegen is students. There's lots of green places. Um, as you can see here, we're based on the, on the river. This is the River Waal, uh, which is the largest branch of, uh, of the Rhein. It comes in from Germany and from the Netherlands. It uh, travels on to the, to the North Sea. Um, we have, um, yeah, you can have a lo lot of recreational options there. It has a, a very large cultural life as well. Um, there's lots of, um, yeah, there's a, an art house cinema, for example. There's old factories which have been redeveloped into cultural centers where you can do courses or you can do all sorts of uh, art things. There's very good places to eat. It's a, it's a good place for, uh, for exploring uh, uh, other parts of the country because, uh, because the Netherlands is so small. It only takes about an hour and a half uh, on a direct train to Amsterdam, for example. And it's very easy to get around by bicycle. I think, uh, Blami, if I may ask you, for example, um, do you cycle? And how do you find Nijmegen as a city? Yes, I cycle every day in the sun, in the rain. <laughs> um, what I really like about Nijmegen is that, um, yeah, like you said, it's a relatively small city. So for me, for example, the, the, the campus, all of the, the buildings that I have lectures in are uh, five minutes away from me cycling and the city center is 10-15 minutes away from me um, by bike so 
I think it's everything is yeah everything important for me is super close. That's good. Cycle. Yeah. Thank you. And um, Kristen Kostova, Christine, um, how do you like uh, Nijmegen as a sort of student city? What is it like to go out or to eat? Where do you do your shopping, for example? Do you go to the market or not? Um, I think it's it's actually um, it, it's great for students. Um, most because um, also a lot of students live here, but as well as um, it's it's small, but it's not that small. You you can find anything here. Um, and yes, the markets are great. You can get uh, cheaper things there, and it's very nice to go and look around. And Nijmegen in general in general is um, a, just an amazing place. Um, it, you can see a bit from the pictures, but living here is very different and experiencing all the different things that um, the city can offer. So yes, it's great. Uh, for groceries, uh, we usually go to um, I usually go to the supermarkets that they have here. Um, I think most of them are Dutch um, around the place that I live. Um, and um, yeah, you can find everything there. And I think something important um, is that in the Netherlands, you need a special, um, well, bank account in order to pay in those places. But you can figure out those more practical things later on, I think. Um, okay, thank you very much for that. Um, and now on to Rabat University. The building you see here, for example, is uh, is our law faculty. Um, as you can see, it's um, it's a very modern building. It's uh, it has what looks like a glass roof, but in actual fact, uh, the roof is full of uh, solar panels. Because one of the things that uh, Rabat University is is very active about is sustainability. Uh, the university tries to be as sustainable as possible. The aim is to be one hundred percent sustainable as soon as possible. So all new buildings um, yeah, are, are made completely 100% sustainable. And sustainability has also become one of the um, subjects which is taught in every study program um, throughout the campus. So what, it doesn't matter which program you will choose, even you know in psychology, for example, you will learn about sustainability. Um, as you do about philosophy, all programs also have a, a philosophy course in them. Now here you can see um, how green it is. Um, we pride ourselves on being the only university uh, with such a green campus in the Netherlands. There are there are two uh, campus universities in the Netherlands, um, but what we like about Rabat University is it's because it's very close to the city centre, and it's very green because it's built on an old country estate. Um, so it's a, it's a very it's it's an old. A uh, very green park-like area uh, within very close, yeah, in the heart of the city. Um, the social sciences, like I said already about the sustainability, the social science building uh, is our latest building, which is 100% uh, energy neutral. We also have a, a green office. So if uh, you want to know anything about sustainability, you can go to the green office. Um, and on the campus, you find everything is, is there. So basically, you will have uh, all faculties are there, but there was also restaurants there. Uh, there's libraries. And we have uh, the very modern facilities. Um, what you see here, for example, is um, in the, the building in the background is um, the Highfield Magnet Laboratory. Uh, but on campus, we have multimedia centers. So uh, everywhere you go, there are self-study places uh, where you can just uh, log in and uh, have very fast internet and you can just work there. Um, and we have the high-tech laboratories, for example, like the, uh, the uh, Highfield Magnet Laboratory that you see here, which is one of three very strong uh, magnets um, in the world. Um, a few years ago, some of our scientists were working here uh, playing, uh, yeah, just experimenting uh, in this uh, magnet laboratory. And later on, they discovered a, um, a very thin layer of carbon, which is called graphene. And graphene is used, for example, in uh, very in nanotechnology or in smartphones or televisions, uh, modern, modern devices. And for that, they received the uh, Nobel Prize for Physics. The research... Um, at our university is very much interdisciplinary, so uh, all faculties work together as much as you can, and all the teachers, all the people who teach in the programs, 
they are researchers. So all research is integrated in the teaching, which also means that um, um, yeah, the, the teaching is very much up to date with, uh, with today's uh, research, for example. Um, Kristen, you study uh, psychology. Can you tell a little bit about how this is integrated in your program, for example? Yes, of course. Um, so for me, uh, in psychology, we have a lot of courses where we learned how to write research articles and how to find uh, like the main points of the articles, like uh, the research question, the research goal, and we had a whole course. And then after that course, we had a another course where we conducted research and we worked in teams and then we presented it. So it's very research focused and you need to back up every argument you make with evidence. And yeah, I think it's better that way because you stay up to date and everything is empirically supported. And mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you find um, how do you find it to make a, because we say that the, the the way we teach is is uh, is like a small scale. So um, how is how easy is it for you, for example, to to approach your professors and and uh, your teachers? Um. I would say uh, it's easy depending on like if it's a lecture, there are more people, so it's it's still approachable, but it's not like a work group where you have twenty other people and you can ask a question every second because you also have to be respectful. But even in lectures, you can go in the breaks or when they ask you if you have questions, you're free to ask. So I think it's very open in that sense and. It's very easy to communicate to the professors and teachers, and you can always write an email, so it's very easy. And is that different, do you think, to, to how uh, teaching is done in Bulgaria? Did you find a sort of cultural difference there? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, for example, what I noticed, and it was a bit of a culture shock, it was that here you address everyone by their first name and it's more not casual but uh, it's you're more on the same level when talking to the person and approaching them and it's it's easier and they're more open-minded I feel like but depends I guess thank you um because uh, yeah you're all international students um there's a lot of inter different nationalities uh, on campus which you may have found we have uh, over 100 different uh, nationalities here on the slide you see a, a few of our students um plummy how how do you find being an international student at Rabat university yeah so i study philosophy and most of my close students are um like they're not Dutch, they're from different uh, countries. And I really like, um, yeah, connecting with people from different cultures and like um, us gathering together, cooking for each other, um, getting to know, getting to know like different, different perspectives, different um, traditions, for example. And I, I, for me, that was, has been very eye opening since, since I came here for my bachelor's, like connecting with with different people, different perspectives. And mm -hmm. I really, really value that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because uh, the different perspectives and the different cultures, um, we think um, they add to the to the international teaching, of course, because um, we have what we call the personal approach, as quality connection and personal contact are central to our education. Um, and being in the international community, especially if you're working in a small like seminar group, what we find, um, and the students um, may back that up if they want to, that because you're 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 in a group with different cultures, sometimes somebody can bring in an argument or a point of view which is completely different from what you're used to, um, and therefore it can enrich the program and it can enrich um, the academic world. I think so. Um, um, Christine Kostova, could you could you um, yeah maybe share a little bit about what it's like 
um, to be an international student like this? Um, yes, I would say that especially in PPS, what I study, so philosophy, politics and society, um, because we have smaller groups when it comes to the lectures, it's very easy to for everyone to talk and share their opinions. And um, even during the um, bigger lectures uh, where there's more people, um, it's very free to to talk and um, to share your opinions. Um, in PPS, we have people from all over the world. So it's been very interesting, um, especially on um, different subjects like ethics and um, and democracy to see the different perspectives that people have. So um, yes, it is it, it is encouraged during the, the lecture. So that's, that's very nice. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll quickly share some, some facts and figures with you. We have uh, seven faculties. So basically you can study anything you want at Rabat University apart from agriculture and engineering because for agriculture and engineering, we have uh, separate universities. We have technical universities and we have the agricultural university in the Netherlands. We have more than 100 nationalities on campus. 73% uh, of the students, they obtain their bachelor's diploma within four years. Um, and one in five students um, is an international student on campus. Um, that which means that within because only a third of our programs are actually international programs. So two thirds of the programs are Dutch. So you can imagine that the, the number of, of international students within those international programs is a lot higher than one in five, of course. Um, and 98% and of people, they do find a paid job within eight months after they receive their master's diploma. So you can see um, it's it's a it's a highly valued master's diploma, which you can use either within the Netherlands or any other country in the world, really. Now I'll share um, a little bit of a, um, a video with you, which might give you an impression of uh, of what it's like uh, at our university. Okay, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, it gives a little bit of an impression um, away from the winter into the summer. Um, well, now we'll talk about uh, a little bit about the bachelor's programs that you can do. There are 14 bachelor's programs that you can do uh, at Rabat University in arts and culture and history, like uh, there's arts and culture studies, comparative European history, um, but also in the behavioral sciences like artificial intelligence and psychology, for example, which we've already touched on a little bit. There's the business administration and economics and business economics. And the languages, you can study American studies um, and English language and culture or international business communication. And international business communication, um, yeah, it, it, it basically is about uh, different perspectives on how you communicate with different cultures and different, uh, different uh, countries, for example. Um, philosophy, PPS program. Um, where we have a student uh, this evening joining us. Um, and in the science, we have biology, chemistry, computing science, and molecular life sciences. And there's two programs here, like uh, philosophy and biology, and they are slightly different in their admission because they have uh, a selection program. That's because we have a lot of people ap applying, um, um, and more people than, than we have places for. So Dutch, as well as international students, they have to do... Um, to have to take part in a selection uh, program. The deadline for the selection program is the 15th of January. So that is um, well before the other deadlines. 
Um, Christine, you, you do psychology, so you did the uh, selection program. Can you tell us a little bit about um, yeah, what that means? For yeah, of course. So the selection program basically means that they send you material to study and then you have an entrance entrance exam on that material. So you don't necessarily have to have any prior knowledge, but you do have to learn what they send you. And then I think the exam I had was three hours and I had around 50 questions. And then based on that and your motivation letter and your CV and all of that, uh, you get a placement number. Uh, I remember that when I applied to the university, I think there were around a hundred, like a thousand five hundred people, and then you get your placement number, and they accept six uh, six hundred. Do you remember your placement number? Yeah, I think I was a hundred and fifty. Okay, so you did well. Basically, what it means is that the selection uh, procedure is to make sure that people are really motivated for the program because what happened before is that people would start the program uh, and maybe had different expectations of what the program was really like. So they would drop out before Christmas, um, which is a waste because you know we want to make sure that the people that do get a chance to study these programs are the people who are, who are really motivated. So um, the experience is that if people uh, start the selection procedure uh, the, the selection program and they, they fully finish it, the chances of getting in are actually quite high. It's basically a sort of natural selection because people who are not that motivated, they, they usually don't finish this program anyway. Um, we also have uh, master's programs. We have 117 English programs and specializations in, uh, in basically all the fields um, that we teach. So it's business and economics, computing science, programs in the humanities, but also in the medical sciences, for example, there's uh, molecular mechanisms of disease, uh, European law, planning and uh, human geography, uh, and also public administration and political sciences. Um, all the science programs, they have master's programs in, uh, fully in English, um, as well as social and behavioral sciences. Um, but of course, uh, Skylines can help you go through this if you are interested and they can tell you more, or you can look on our website ru.nl slash masters or for the bachelors that would be ru.nl slash bachelors now the admission um, um, to, to to procedure to to get in you will need a high school diploma the, I, I may try to pronounce this but i won't <laughs> but, uh, um, and um, your diplomas will be assessed individually and apart from your diploma, if you're not taught at an English or an international school, then you will also need proof of English proficiency. That could be either, either an IELTS, a TOEFL, um, Certificate of English um, uh, Diploma. Um, you don't necessarily have to have your proof of English proficiency or your diploma at the time when you apply, but you will need to have them uh, by the time you start the program. The admission for uh, a master's program is a finished bachelor's degree in a relevant uh, area and, of course, uh, proof of English. And some programs, they do have program specific uh, requirements as well. The application, the application is done via StudyLink. StudyLink uh, opens every year at the beginning of October. Um, you, so you can start your application at the beginning of October. Um, and once you start, you will get a link to uh, OSIRIS. OSIRIS is our own application system where you upload all your documents. Um, once you start your application, you don't have to do everything in one day. You will get six weeks to finish your application. Um, and if you have any questions, then either you contact us or you can also contact uh, the people from Skylines um, to help you. Um, Plami, can you uh, share with us how how it was to apply? Was it how was it hard? Was it easy? How was it for my master's program or the bachelor's or either? I can focus on my master's program because it was more uh, recent. So I needed to um, yeah, I needed to get my diploma or a proof of diploma first. I needed um, a writing sample so. Uh, 
like an essay that I have written that I really think that it's a good essay and I have edited it well and also motivational letter so it what it did require a lot of writing for example they said that I submitted was like 15 pages so I had to <laughs> I had to deal with that um, but for my master's it was a bit easier I think to to apply because I didn't need like any language certificates or anything like that, because I already finished my bachelor's here in English. So it was a bit a bit smoother, uh, bureaucracy-wise, I think. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine. But of course, you know, if you have any questions about your bachelor application, um, you know, please contact uh, the people from Skylines or you can contact us directly and we're all here to help you. The deadlines for the selection, the selective bachelor's programs, the numerous fixes are the 15th of January. So that would be psychology and uh, biology. Otherwise, your deadline is the 1st of May um, for the EU students. Um, you do have until, you, officially you have until the 1st of July, but we wouldn't recommend you doing that because if you want any help with finding housing, um, you really need to apply before the 1st of May, otherwise we cannot help you with housing anymore. Um, the tuition fees for next year are the same, uh, like I said, for um, as well as for Dutch students, which would be 2,530 euros. There are a few scholarships available for uh, master's programs, although most of them are for non-EU students and for bachelor students, we do not have any scholarships programs. Um, accommodation, yes, it's an issue. It is difficult in the Netherlands. Uh, it's difficult for Dutch people. It's difficult for international people. At the moment, um, we do not help with uh, finding accommodation for bachelor students. However, there is a, a, like a sort of lottery system with the SSHN, which is a student housing association. And for people who live a uh, long distance away, like more than 200 kilometers from the university and can therefore not travel on a daily basis, they do get priority um, in the lottery system. So they do get a chance to get accommodation before the other people. Um, but again, therefore, it is important that you apply uh, well on time. Otherwise, you miss the boat on this. And yeah, it can be quite hard to find accommodation. For master students, uh, we still have the housing option that we uh, we help students to find accommodation for the duration of the program. Um, Christine or Plami, do either of you uh, live in student accommodation through the university? Yes, I do. Yeah, me too. Okay, and how easy was it to find? Well, for yeah. me at least, I played the lottery, so I had a voucher for my first year. And then um, shortly before January, I started playing the lottery. And then I was actually very lucky and I quickly won a place. And it's really nice that when you get a place from the lottery, you can stay in that apartment or room for as long as you're studying. So even if it's your bachelor's or you do a master's here, you can also use that same accommodation. And that is, that brings me so much peace. So yeah, I I think that it's very helpful because I know a lot of people who had a lot of trouble finding accommodation and the lottery is great. Okay, well, that's that's good to hear. Thank you, and and also because before people would uh, would get assistance finding accommodation, but that would only be for one year, and then people had to find other accommodation. Uh, and now, of course, when you do find somewhere to live in your first year, at least you can have the peace of mind that you can stay there throughout your program. Um, Apart from studying, we also, of course, have student life and social support because um, you don't only study, you also live a life when you are an international student. Um, and your student days, they are your good days. Well, they should be, and hopefully they will be. Um, so we offer some some help with that too. Um, for example, we have the uh, Rappard Sports Centre. The Rappard Sports Centre is a state-of-the-art sports centre with uh, an excellent variety of sports with professional guidance. Um, we have over 80 sports. The sports center was uh, awarded the best university sports center in the world in the uh, International Student Barometer, which is uh, a questionnaire which is done among international students 
worldwide every two years. Um, it's quite affordable. It's 157 euros per year. Um, and yeah, you can do anything from pole dancing, yoga, football, beach volleyball, as you can see here, um, anything you like. Do, do you, girls, do you play at the, do you do anything at the sports center? Um, yes, I've tried some of the classes and also you can always sign up for um, different activities during the week. So they have yoga and you can just sign up for the class and go there. And it's, it is really nice. Um, you can uh, use the gym as well, which is um, equipped. They have everything and you can make a personal uh, appointment with some of the people there. So they, they help you as well. It's, it's very nice. Thank you. And of course, before you sign up at the beginning of the year, the beginning of the academic year, the beginning of the calendar year, there's always sort of uh, trial weeks where you can just try something um, so you can see if it's for you or not. And then there's the orientation week. The orientation week is held at the third week of August. Uh, we do highly recommend that you, you go there because it's an excellent way of uh, getting to know the campus, getting to know the city, um, it's a week of full of fun and games, but also uh, where we where we teach you, like, for example, how do you sign up for your courses? Where do you find out um, uh, what, what you need to prepare for your courses? Where do you find your timetables? How does the library work? And that sort of thing. But ab above all, um, it's a very good way to meet people because coming to a, a new country um, yeah, it's different. It's 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 quite a big step, especially when you start your master's program and it's your first time away from home. Um, it can be a bit of a daunting experience. Um, so in order to to make it a little bit easy for you to settle in, um, we have the orientation week where you will be in the same group of about ten people for the whole week, um, and it's a good way uh, to meet people and to sort of um, yeah have an easy landing basically. Um, and apart from that, there are other things to get involved. For example, there are special uh, student associations for international students. You can do the sports club. You can also do theater, debating, music. Uh, there are social events, uh, especially also for international students, where we go um, yeah, to different parts of the country, for example. You can become a member of a student board. Um, and there are also uh, study-related uh, programs. And if you want to know more, you can look on the, on the website ru.nl slash social activities, um, where you can find out more. Um, Plami, can you tell us a little bit, for example, um, about something that you do apart from your uh, your studies? Do you do any, any of these other activities? Yeah, so I frequently go to the so-called pink lunches. So they are organized by DITOS, that's an LGBT organization in Nijmegen, and they organize it in the, the student church um, mm -hmm. almost every like every other week, every Wednesday. And that's something that I really like to do. And it's a very nice, nice way to meet new people. Something else that is quite new actually on the Radboud's campus is the GSA, so the Gender and Sexuality Alliance. So they're just now starting to organize like a lot of fun, like explicitly queer activities. For example, they had a, a market and a lot of different organizations were presenting like books or uh, giving out flyers and people were talking. There was also poetry a recital and that was that was really nice. And those are things that I'm currently more involved in. And then I like okay. That's interesting. Um, I think we're a little bit pressed for time. So um, to summarize why you might go to Rabat University is because uh, it's top quality and affordable education. Uh, Rabat University was awarded uh, the best university in the country, I think about eight times in the last uh, 10 years. Currently we're second, so we're hoping to be first again next year. Um, we have a very wide range of study programs, um, so please have a look and see if there's anything that you would like to do. We have, uh, you, you will receive a worldwide recognized diploma. Um, like I say, the university is in the top 1% worldwide, so uh, it's a valuable uh, diploma. The uh, approach to teaching um, is uh, very personal. Uh, there's also a lot of student support facilities for you. Um, 
And uh, we have excellent uh, yeah, services and facilities like student support, uh, student deans, uh, mentors, uh, study advisors, and things like that. So that is it uh, for me at the moment. Um, we have some other events coming up. If you are interested, on the 7th of February, for example, there's a webinar about the bachelor's programs in chemistry and molecular life sciences. Um, there's also a webinar for artificial intelligence and computing science. Um, the day after that, a, a webinar for language and communications and also for bachelor's programs in business administration, economics. Uh, so you can see there are program related webinars coming up. Have a look at our website. Um, and if you feel like it, you can come to our bachelor's open day online on campus or offline or to our master's open day online or offline. So that's it for me. Um, any further information can be found here, or of course, you can also uh, contact the people from uh, from Skylines. Um, I think now we'll go back to Dimitar and see if there's any questions that uh, we can may help you to answer. Uh, yes, uh, most of the questions uh, came into the Q and A uh, section, and I see that my colleagues uh, have uh, answered to some of them, but. Uh, you can guys continue with uh, the other questions that uh, just came in. Uh, probably Marika will help with uh, reading the questions. Okay, the first question that we have is, do you have any financial su support for non-EU citizens? For non-EU citizens? Um, yes, there are a few scholarships. Um, but they, there is quite a, there's only a few scholarships. So... There are scholarships, but uh, that, there's not that many. So it, it is a little bit difficult. So therefore, and also, of course, people say, can I work to finance my studies? Um, technically speaking, you can, especially if you're an EU citizen, then you can work you know, as many hours as you like. For non-EU students, it's a bit more difficult because you can only work a maximum of 16 hours per week. Mm -hmm. However, um, all the programs that we have, they are full-time programs. So we would like to to give people a little bit of a warning and say, well, you know, don't rely on working um, because you will need your time to, um, yeah, to to basically um, to invest in your studies. Um, and also, if you're going to a different country and it's new, you also want to enjoy it and enjoy your student days, enjoy the different countries. So, um, yeah, you can work. Um, but we don't recommend it, especially in the first year. We would say, you know, leave it until at least your second year if you want to work. Okay, thank you. I would say also you can go to the university website and then you can type in scholarships in the search exactly. and then maybe some scholarships will appear. Or also if you like particular program, you can also contact Skyline so we can check it for you. Uh, okay, the next question is, does Radboud University have online courses as well? uh we don't no we um some some courses of course uh, some lectures are recorded but we're very much a campus university um where we we really value um on uh, offline interaction between people because um yeah the the, the small the small scale seminars uh, are very much part of our uh, teaching system so we do not have online courses as such Okay, thanks. Um, what about the dormitory and the places to rent in the town? I think you answered this question um, partly. Um, can you also, maybe some of the students will also um, join this, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, housing in town? What about the private options? Um, I would say that it's quite hard to find a place um especially now there is a housing crisis in the netherlands so definitely if you decide to study you you should make sure that you have a place before coming here because it's impossible to find a place after um uh, just immediately um and it's a very hard process um with the lottery as well i think that was mentioned but uh be aware that when it's a lottery um not everyone is as lucky so it's for some people it um it took one or two years to to get a room uh so definitely make sure that you have somewhere you can be when um when coming um yes i think that's important to to say 
I think another important issue, point that we can stress here, and maybe you can talk a little bit about this, is that every all the accommodation here is uh, that everybody has their own private room. So you don't have to share a room with somebody like you do in some countries. So everybody will have their own room. Um, but there are shared facilities like bathrooms and kitchens, for example. And I think the kitchens is also, if you have to share them, it is also an opportunity to meet other people, of course. Is that your experience as well? Christine? Um, yes, so it's a private room. And um, in my first year, I did share my um, kitchen and the bathroom with two other roommates. And um, I was again lucky to uh, have a nice experience because they were very understanding and respectful. And um, we had good house rules. And I still keep in contact with them, so it's it's nice to live with roommates because university sometimes, especially when you're busy and you study a lot at home, can get a bit isolating. So it's nice if you have roommates you can talk to, and especially if you're on good terms, it's it's a very pleasant experience, and you also feel safer because, after all, if you are alone in another country, it's it's nicer if. You're, you don't live fully alone. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I saw uh, a question about mathematics requirements. I uh, know, talking about the accommodation, there was also a question about the accommodation fees. Maybe we can also mention that now. Yeah, sure. I think uh, on average, a room would cost between 375 and 500 euros per calendar month, uh, depending on the location and on the facilities. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, so other question is, are there um, are there mathematic requirements for bachelor's program computing science? And the question is for hours per week in 11th and 12th grade. It's more specific. Okay, I think there are mathematics requirements, uh, but the specifics I would refer back to uh, skylines. I think because you're 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 more knowledgeable about the uh, admission requirements uh, and how that compares to uh, to your school system uh, than I do. But that uh, mathematics is relevant. Yes. Yeah. So just to say that it's really important that you have. Uh, mathematics, that you study mathematics in 11th and 12th grade. Uh, it's important that it's part of your profile. And uh, maybe for specific programs, it's good to check uh, what are the additional requirements uh, for Bulgarian diploma. So for this, I would suggest that you maybe contact us if necessary we can also of course discuss it with you guys from about um, so next question what is required to apply for bachelor's degree in computer science again okay so uh for this maybe also contact us there are several documents that you will need as i mentioned if you study in a Bulgarian high school, we already mentioned what is important for the mathematics, for example. Uh, but more documents, uh, for that we can always give you more information when you contact us. Um, or you can join one of the webinars next week, the program-specific webinars. Yes, these two. Uh, okay, from anonymous attendee, uh, he says or she, I finished my high school degree in May of this year. Can I apply to this university for the up uh, for the coming up school year, or would I have to wait until next year? And in which month am, am I allowed to apply? So uh, you can you can apply now. Uh, you need to apply, you need to finish your application before the uh, 1st of May. Um, and of course, you know, most people will not have finished their high school in May and are wait, still waiting for their results, which is which is not a problem. You if you if you 
tell us um, which pro which exams you're taking, um, and then we can give you um, an admission, um, provided you will show us your diploma before the middle of August. So you will be provisionally admitted, uh, and the provision being that you uh, get that you pass your uh, your exams and get your diploma. But you can still, but you need to apply before the first of May, um, and show us your diploma uh, before August. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is: Hello, can I get more about medical science? Um, are there any degrees with medical science at at Radboud University? Um, we do have medical sciences. Um, however, medical sciences is a program in Dutch. Um, the reason being that uh, the, the yeah the patients speak Dutch. Um, so if you are fluent in Dutch, then yes, you can apply to do uh, medicine. Other than that, you can do biology, which is in English, the bachelor's program, and from there on, you can do the specialization in medical biology. Uh, and then from then on, you can do, uh, for example, uh, biomedical sciences as your master's program or molecular mechanisms of disease. So if you want to become a doctor, then no. But if you want to do a medical program, then yes, you can do medical biology as a bachelor's, um, for example. OK, thanks. Uh, due to the selection period for psychology students, does that mean that I start my studies at Ardis in 2025? Uh, yes, the selection for uh, psychology has already finished, so it's no longer possible to apply for the, the 2024. Um, so if you want to do psychology, then you need to apply uh, next January, um, and then you can start next year in 2025. That is correct. Yes, you can apply uh, for psychology if it's a bachelor from October this year, 2024 to January 2025, and then you start the studies in 20, 2025. It's the deadline is the 15th of January, midnight. Okay, next question is, uh, do you have a genetic BA program? Maybe genetics um, is what you mean? Yeah. I think genetics uh, would be part of medical biology. So... Mm -hmm. Don't pin me down 100%, but I would not be surprised if there is a program in genetics in medical biology. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are, about the requirement for admission in biology and other natural sciences, matura physics or chemistry grade 6? Means it 100% grade or it can be 5.8 uh, or 5.5? Oh, very specific question. For us, it doesn't... Um the grades are less important than your curriculum because um, what we want to know, the admission, all diplomas and all applications will be assessed individually by the uh, admission office. Uh, the admission officer will look at what you have done, will look at your curriculum. Your grades are less important than what you studied at school, but you do, of course, need to pass your exams. So you do need to pass your exam, but you don't necessarily need 100% grade. Uh, I think there is a requirement for Matura for this particular um, bachelor in biology, but we can also check it for you if you email Skylines, we can, yeah, check it. Yeah. Do you have summer schools for high school students? Uh, good question. We do have summer schools. Um, they are mainly for bachelor's and master's students, but I think they are open to everyone. So have a look on our website at the summer school program, because there may well be programs uh, for high school students as well. Okay, thanks. And the last question from the Q&A box. Is there any specific reason why some of your master's degrees are two years or long? In most of the other universities, the courses are a year, year and a half. Is it because there are less hours in a week at uni? <laughs> uh, most programs uh, at our university, are, the, the master's programs are usually one year, with a few exceptions. And the exceptions are the research master's programs which are the programs uh, that prepare you for uh, a career in research. Um, 
all the programs at the science faculties, they are um, they are two years. But other than that, all our master's programs are one year programs and they start in September and some of them also start in February. OK, thank you. Um, I would say most of the degrees in the Netherlands, uh, master's degrees are two years. Only a few of them are one year, I think. Most of them are one year, apart from the science and the research master's programs. Okay, uh, Ellie will check the questions in the chat box. Yes, so we have a few there. Uh, Alexander asks, having in mind the Bulgarian education system, which profiles after 10th grade are most desired? Are they important at all? Maybe this question also on our territory. So uh, it's important to maybe first check what program you wish to apply for. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, math is really important. So it's it would be nice if you want to study at Radboud to uh, study high school profile that involves math. Uh, besides that, it depends on the program, really. There might be some requirements for biology, chemistry, so we can check the, uh, this additionally. If there is anything else, anybody that wants to add, or I continue. Uh, so Diana is asking, are there mathematic requirements for bachelor's program computing science? OK, this one we already answered, I think. Um, which sources you would recommend for finding private housing? I think that this question we also answered. Um, are there any specific requirements for bachelor program human resources? This is a question from Sophia. Uh, first of all, we don't have a program in human resources resources as such. They're usually programs which are done at the Universities of Applied Sciences. Um, there are other programs at the Nijmegen School of Management, um, but I recommend that you look on the website for um, the requirements. The requirements are basically you need to have your high school uh, diploma and mathematics as part of that diploma course. But if you are specifically interested in human resources, then we would refer you to University of Applied Sciences. Okay, thank you. So other question from Iliana. Uh, is 6.5 result listening, reading, writing and speaking on IELTS enough to apply for psychology? I think it is. Um, maybe. I just open the tab to see, but I think it is. It is. Uh, well, it, we have a psychology student here, so she can answer. Yeah. Dean from psychology, do you know? Yeah. Um, I think it was enough. Um, I remember reading that a six point five was enough. I got a seven, so I know that I got in. But I think a six point five would also be okay for the admission yeah i i think so too i think six and a half is okay and seven usually for the master's programs uh but these things do vary um so please check with, with your application we think it's okay but to make sure please check also i'm sorry to interrupt but i have a class right now and i'll have to okay. go sorry. okay that's have fine thank you very much for for your um contributions Thank you and good luck to any uh, to everyone. Okay, thanks very much, Christine. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You, Bye. Okay, so on with the questions. Uh, Dylan, another uh, question about uh, language certificate. Would the Cambridge certificate still be valid if the test was taken in ninth or tenth grade, which is two years before application for university? 
Um, I think officially the validity of the certificate is two years, um, but it also depends on the program um, and the admission office because, um, yeah, check. I check, it, it checks, it, it, just send it in. Uh, please use it for your application. Don't do not do another test uh, before you know that this is not valid because it may very well still be valid and accepted. Okay, uh, I think this is the last question from Alexander. Do you have Bachelor in Sustainability? Which profiles are required? Um, we don't have a program in sustainability as such. We do have, of course, programs where sustainability is part of the course. Um, so it depends where your focus is. If it's in economics, for example, um, or in other programs, then you know, please look at the um, the curriculum or talk to your admission officers because sustainability is very much part of the program, but we don't have a bachelor's program in sustainability as such. Okay, thank you. Uh, these are all the questions. I think we covered everything from Q and A and from the chat box. Yeah. Well, uh, Karen, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, the participation. Thank you, Plami. Thank you, Christine. Uh, once again, just to remind all the participants that are still here, we have this session recorded and we will send it uh, via email. And after that, if you have more questions, you can uh, ask them via email or you can contact us uh, through the other sources. Okay. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. And bye-bye, everybody. And if there's any questions, let us know. Of course. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.